harsh habitat built on barren volcanic rock. Isolated for millions of years by 1,000 kilometres of open ocean, it's a living laboratory of evolution. This is the Galapagos Islands. These remote islands produced and protected some of nature's most unique and vulnerable creatures. On average, only one species every thousand years arrived and survived here. They evolved without natural predators, without competition and without pathogens. But man arrived and upset the balance. In the ocean, marine life is being plundered while the local legal system fails to take effective action. And on land, introduced species wreak havoc on native flora and fauna. Few people understand the issues facing Galapagos better than the conservation NGOs and scientists based there. There are a number of species which are being pushed uh, rather heavily at the moment, um, maybe even pushed toward extinction. We have boats coming in on, an, on a daily basis, airplanes coming in on a daily basis, and uh, we need to be able to manage those impacts. I think, unfortunately, there is, there is a severe lack of education in terms of environmental issues here in Galapagos. The abundant marine life is threatened by over-harvesting and illegal fishing in the Galapagos. And it's not just tablefish that are targeted. Sea cucumbers and seahorses are collected for Chinese traditional medicine, and shark finning is rampant despite laws against it. Today, the problem has been much more because of the finning of sharks, just taking the fins and throwing the bodies away, which is a, a, an absolutely disgraceful kind of fishery. Fisheries as a whole are under threat. When illegal fishermen are arrested, whether local, mainland Ecuadorian or from overseas, they are released on a meagre $200 bail. When they don't turn up to court, their case is dismissed. The system as it exists makes it pretty much impossible to come to a successful conclusion in any case. In the 12 years that we've had environmental laws in the Galapagos, nobody has ever been convicted of an environmental crime. And that's what we're trying to change. Greed and corruption add to the problem. In the local media, profiteers argue that conservationists are stopping the fishermen from earning a living. Incited, the fishermen have used intimidation to secure higher fishing quotas. In 2004, the fishermen turned to mob rule in their attempt to continue harvesting the declining stocks of sea cucumbers. That year was very hard. We had strikes, the park wardens were attacked. Eventually, they opened the fishery for four times the, the recommended quota. And in 2005, there was no fishery. It collapsed. Who lost? Fishermen. It's simple. If you continue to take more than is sustainable, there'll be nothing left to take. If you talk to fishermen as a group, they will talk about conservation as a way to oppress them. But if you talk to them on an individual basis, they are quite the opposite. They are pretty aware of, for example, that there has been an overexploitation of sea cucumbers. And it's not only the fishermen that want a piece of the Galapagos. Booming tourism has encouraged illegal immigrant workers and increased demand on local resources. An influx of cruise ships, cargo ships and flights have unintentionally brought in invasive species. At the moment we got about 700 introduced plants and about 500 endemic ones. Now the situation is quite grim. We think of rats, cats, dogs and goats as the introduced problem species. But even more dangerous are insects, bacteria and viruses. Dengue fever hit the local people in recent years and a multitude of other pests are affecting native wildlife. A fly was introduced to Galapagos in the recent past and this fly is an obligatory parasite on nestlings in terrestrial birds. They cause anemia and you can get up to 100% mortality of nestling. That's extinction. That's extinction. Man's arrival triggered turbulent times for Galapagos wildlife. Iconic animals are just hanging on. If biodiversity is to survive, action is needed. We do have institutions. We do have resources. Right now we do have experience, we have knowledge. It's when people get their feet on the ground and get their hands dirty, that's where it happens. Conservation is hands dirty. They should be preserved. And that's why we're here, working for that. I expect to see my daughters diving one day and probably watching the same stuff I watched. And I, I want it to happen. It's not ours to destroy. It is our responsibility to ensure that these things live on and are there to impress others as they have impressed us.